Okay, welcome everyone um, to this time of community and practice. So a, a special heart welcome to those that are able to be here on the Zoom call and um, an equal <clears throat> welcome to those that are practicing with us um, on the YouTube recording after the fact. And just to let folks know that um, maybe watching the recording, I may be muting at times to um, cough as I'm still recovering from a virus. <clears throat> and we'll see how, how it goes. <clears throat> Several things uh, inspired tonight's practice and theme. The first is um, a, a show on, um, let me just make sure this is muted. Okay. Um, on Netflix that uh, is called Stutz, Stutz, S-T-U-T-Z. Um, there's an actor named Jonah Hill and um, this man, Dr. Phil Stutz, is his therapist for a long time. I think they've been working together for many years. I can't remember how many. And <clears throat> Jonah Hill, the actor, felt really inspired to make this documentary about his therapist's very unique therapeutic ways and insights and tools that he offers. And yeah, it's 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 a very unique film. I've never seen anything quite like it, but there's lots of gems in it. And one one of the ways this um teacher, therapist teaches is by drawing the lessons in little pithy images for people to take home and to remember the lesson and to work with it. He, uh, I think he probably has a book now called The Tools or something, I think I saw. And, but there was one in particular that stood out to me called The Grateful Flow, this uh, practice a gratitude practice and it's a, a unique way I it felt unique in my system of cultivating gratitude which is is kind of a, a a common practice that we probably may have all done at some point as a formal intention practicing gratitude um but there's a little turn in how he approaches it that that um, I've been exploring and I've found it helpful. Um, so I'll explain a bit more about that and then we'll practice it together. Uh, but then um, uh, one of our fellow teachers here and a student friend, um, Kathy, reminded me earlier today about... Uh, Brother David Stendhal Rost, and <clears throat> he has a whole, it's really become a whole movement. Uh, the website grateful.org has a lot of amazing resources and teachings, and the science of gratitude, of course, is in there. And uh, he has a TED talk that's had a, a lot of views, many, many thousands of views. Um, he's a Benedictine monk, but also, uh, but and also, a well-renowned and beloved teacher. And he, in his talk on his TED talk, I forget the title of it. There's something about if you want to be happy, be grateful, or something. I don't think that's quite accurate. Want to be happy, be grateful. Ah, I was pretty close. <laughs> and he talks about in that talk how everybody wants to be happy. <laughs> um, 
no matter who and where, everybody we pass on the street, everybody wants to be happy. And he he sa says, we, we sometimes may have the idea that to be, um, that, that when you have all the things, all the conditions, whatever the things are you think that will make you happy, then you'll be grateful, you know, that if you, if I have this and this and this and, and whatever, health and relationship and whatever the things are on your list, that um, <coughs> all those conditions of happiness, that then that's what creates somebody being grateful. And he points out that actually we know many people that <clears throat> have all the things that you might think lead to a happy life, but they're still not happy. Or people that seem to, <clears throat> you know, have experienced quite a bit of um, suffering and um, hardship, misfortune, and yet they are reportedly happy so it's um he, he kind of the the pithy line the punch line in his talk is that it's not happiness that makes you grateful it's gratitude that makes you happy so it's not having all the happiness things makes you a grateful person it's actually practicing gratitude cultivating gratitude living with gratitude that makes you a happy person that's pretty interesting i think and uh it's worth trying isn't it check it out for yourself of course we could go on about the benefits of gratitude and there's lots of studies about this and lists about it um, but just to name that <clears throat> when we're really living in a state of gratitude and cultivating this and working with it daily um, we it counters fear so you could probably feel that in your own experience if you're beset by fear quite a bit and worry that it's counter to gratitude. If you're feeling gratitude, you can't really be feeling a lot of fear at the same time. Um, <clears throat> gratitude also fosters generosity when there's a sense of uh, abundance, not meaning abundance of the things, because we already just talked about how that's not the real source of happiness, but when there's a sense of gratitude and interconnectedness, generosity naturally flows from that. Um, there tends to be a real sense of respect for diversity when we're practicing with gratitude because we can see and are looking for the, the beauty and the uniqueness in, in all beings. Um, yeah, and the list goes on. It cultivates joy, hope, trust, so many benefits. Um, so he, um, on Brother David Stondel Ross site, grateful.org, there's, there's practices and tools to uh, cultivate this in your daily life. <laughs> <laughs> But in, in particular tonight, I want to refer to um, Stutz, Dr. Phil Stutz practice, because it, uh, I'll describe it first and then we'll practice it together. You start by kind of the usual kind of gratitude list, you know, and some people do this as a daily practice and at the beginning of the day or the end of their day. Um, keeping a gratitude journal. And so it's contemplating 
and just allowing these things to arise very slowly, taking our time with each and kind of listing gratitudes. It can be several small things, it can be big things, but we don't have to search for big things. It can, we just kind of let ourselves generate this list of gratitudes. And then after doing that for a period of time, we'll pause and really attune to the sensations of it. Not so much continuing listing items or states or relationships, etc. cetera. Uh, but what is the sensation of the gratitude? How does that feel in the body, in the heart, in the mind? And then what he does is this little turn <clears throat> just when you're about to generate another great grateful thought you stop and just abide let it grow feel the force that's going to generate the grateful thought it, it, there's an energy to it there's a a force that is looking like when you practice with this I've been exploring it for a bit of you know the mind is kind of the energy the heart mind the aware mind is looking and naming and listing so it kind of has an lifted outward energy and then you just stop and just abide in that energy that force and Feel what that's like um, and let it grow and become stronger. So it's 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 a little bit subtle, but it's also not doesn't need to be um, complicated. We don't need to try hard to like feel something special or am I getting it? What is it? What, you know, um, just try, try the process and, and see how it lands for you. <coughs> I apologize for coughing in your ears. Um, <clears throat> lastly, I'll just add that Brother David, as he's called, he's called the grandfather of gratitude. What a nice handle. Oh, boy. Grandfather of gratitude. Very cool thing to be. Uh, he goes on to talk about how these qual the qualities of gratitude is that it's something that's valuable to us and it's something freely given. Um, it's not something we've like earned or merited or accomplished necessarily. It's just this quality of freely given these amazing things. I'm using the word things, but I don't mean things. <laughs> Um, and so then he, 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 the turn is that we can become aware that every moment is a freely given moment. We don't have any rights to this moment. We haven't all merited having another moment of life. We're all just freely granted, gifted this moment. And this one and this one and this one and he says that it is the most valuable gift so it's valuable and freely given and every moment is so valuable because within it is opportunity it's not that we have to be grateful for everything because we're we're not grateful for violence for war for oppression uh for loss and grief you know these aren't things to be grateful for um, but rather in each moment there's the opportunity maybe opportunity for a lesson an opportunity to learn something an opportunity to feel the heart touched in compassion etc so the opportunity is always there mm. enough Yes. <laughs> okay.
Let's do this practice, practice. <clears throat> um, so take time to, this is kind of one of the heart practices, an honorary Brahma Vahara almost. Um, so make sure you're being kind to your body. Um, you might need to get a cushion or change your lighting. You can turn away from the screen if you like. You could lay down, you could practice with a hand on the heart or belly, um, make sure you're warm enough, cool enough, whatever you need. <clears throat> hmm. Mm. So just letting all of those words settle like snowflakes, just floating down, settling down, dissolving, let it go. taking time to really just land meeting ourselves in this moment held here in community with each other We'll take time just to really settle in with ourselves, feeling the heart support of each other in practice, but really meeting our, our body, heart, mind in this present moment. We'll begin by Softening any tension in the face that isn't needed right now. And that means you may choose to hold some tension. So for some of us, it can feel um, a protection or a safety to hold a bit of tension in the in the jaw or any other part of the face and know that's that's okay if that's what you need to do. Just feel into how much is okay to let go of right now. And feeling the shoulders exhale and the bones slide down as the muscles on the sides of the neck lengthen. The weight of the shoulders sliding down through elbows all the way down into relaxed hands. If it feels helpful, perhaps two or three slightly deeper breaths to Invite some softness or movement through the area of the chest. And 
And then letting the breath return to natural breath. Awareness continues settling down through the body. Inviting softness to the inner layers of the belly to some degree, to whatever degree feels helpful. This helps to calm our nervous system. As we allow the muscles to soften, the bones feel heavier, feel the weight of the hips, legs, and feet. And from this place of presence, groundedness, feel this sense of energy rising up through your being. So there's a wakefulness and a brightness in the midst of presence and groundedness. And then we'll allow ourselves to begin cultivating this gratitude practice. Very slowly, taking your time, not needing to run through a grocery list of gratitudes, but just slowly beginning to list. Small things. That we're grateful for. Take your time with each one and. A little bit of. Reflection or contemplation or sensing into it. As we take a little more time here, listing these gratitudes, attuning to the sensations of gratitude, 
Is there a place in the body where you feel an energy or does it have a direction, movement, perhaps a sense of color or light or vibration? Does it feel like something more solid? What are the sensations of gratitude? Now, feel like you're about to create another grateful thought, but you don't. Instead, we just turn towards the energy, that force that would create a grateful thought, a grateful sensation. As if you're just about to name another thing that you're grateful for. And then you just stop there before the naming and just rest in that energy. And allow it to get stronger and stronger. Perhaps feeling if this force has any limits or boundaries. Perhaps it has the quality of what we call PT in meditation, in Dharma. PT, which is joy. It's a type of joy that is very calm and peaceful.
if you notice the mind gets hooked into thinking, you might go back to listing some gratitudes and then feeling the sensation of that and then turning just towards that energy, that force, just moving through those steps again. As we continue practicing together, I'll offer this poem called Small Gratitudes from Rosemary Wutola Tromer. It was one of those days when the alarm didn't go off and we woke anyway to a world covered in snow and by noon the sky was blue. And I drove right through the construction zone without being stopped by a flagger. The tomato for breakfast was ripe and sharp and sweet, and the tea was strong and black. The radio played only songs I wanted to sing. My car started. I had no flat tires. I never felt sick. I never fell. More blessings, it turns out, than a woman can count, though I try to count them all. And the more I remember, a good friend called, all ten fingers are intact, my eyes still see across the room. Yes, the more blessings I consider, the more my joy grows. Until I am dumbfounded, gobsmacked by gratitude. That's exactly the size of the known universe. Amazed by how perfectly it fits, as if I were made for this right inside my skin.
as big as the universe right inside my skin. Hmm. Hmm. So thank you for those who were able to practice with us on the YouTube recording. I'll put the links down below the recording for all the things I mentioned. Um, <laughs> Dr. Stutz and Brother David and... Uh, <laughs> Thank you for being here. Mm.